Hello class, welcome back to our plant propagation class. The topic for today is nursery management and uh, will be delivered by me of course. Uh, this is uh, uh, almost the final uh, topic of our uh, uh, plant propagation course and uh, since the beginning until now we already um, discuss about the kind of technique to propagate plants so now we turn into the management side of the nursery uh, after we propagate so many plants uh, what we'll discuss here is uh, the important aspect in the nursery first uh, it includes uh, site selection and nursery facilities we'll talk about that and then mother plant preparation of course this is also the heart of the uh, activity in the nursery and then production tool and equipment nursery maintenance human resources quality control and uh, marketing and uh, of course i expect some feedback from you after this introduct introductory talk uh, Okay, first the location, uh, we should uh, uh, be able to find a good location for the nursery. Uh, commonly, the good nursery should be in the topography that are uh, no more than 5% slopes. It should be relatively flat. Why? Because yeah, it will be a uh, benefit for you to distribute uh, tools, distribute the uh, uh, plants in your nursery and also of course some uh, people they say that uh, it will be good to have uh, some level of slope because you can do irrigation using the gravitation but uh, if the slope is too high then it will make it difficult for you to transport uh, several kind of thing within your nursery and then uh, the area also should be clear safe and then good uh, have a good soil type and then it should also uh, not uh, too difficult to find water uh, yeah, of course if you if you look up space and yeah, look at area for nursery you uh, for bigger scale maybe you will find out it in the you will find it in the uh, rural area and uh, the one of the uh, reason is that uh, the the price of the land for rent or for buy is uh, relatively uh, cheap but uh, you will deal with uh, such problems such as the, the water availability in that area uh, therefore you should also think about uh, the the irrigation uh, where you can find the water etc and then also the vegetation you should look into the vegetation uh, and by looking at the uh, vegetation you can uh, try to predict the quality of the land because some plants can be as an indicator you can uh, guess about the pH you can guess about uh, uh, availability of a plant that it can be grown in your area and then also you should think about macro and micro climate temperature light humidity is it good for uh, most of the plant you want to uh, propagate yeah. if not then you should think about uh, how to cope with it such as using greenhouse etc and also the land history this is important because uh, uh, some land they they are already infected with nematodes or with uh, uh, virus uh, sorry uh, with the uh, uh, fungi yeah and it make uh, difficult for us to eradicate uh, the uh, pathogen if it's a soil borne disease and it's already uh, infected the, the area and then access to location of course uh, you, you you need to transport your plant in and out and you uh, also buy some uh, tools and equipment and maybe media and it will be good if your place is uh, easy to be accessed especially if you also want to make a display of your product in your nursery and then you invite people to come and buy it then the the access to location is very important and then human resource cost and availability yeah 
So like I mentioned before, uh, for uh, cheap price land, you go to the rural area. The problem is that, uh, is it uh, possible to get a worker from that area? Yeah, and then how about the cost? Because sometimes uh, they the the price is cheap, but the availability is not that high. Uh, nobody uh, eager to work for you in that area. So you should also think about that. And access to production facilities. And uh, last but not least, it's the culture. Uh, you should know about the culture surrounding your area. Is that a, a good culture? They are uh, agriculturists or they are farmers or uh, the, uh, is it uh, safe, well-educated people or, or something? Yeah. And second is nursery facilities. Uh, the university can be in the open field, but if you uh, have a plan with high economical value and then the plan uh, quality is driven by the uh, uh, cosmetic uh, uh, properties of the plan. Therefore, you want to, to keep it as good as possible. And also sometimes you're dealing with the heavy rain in your area and it can uh, also uh, make problem with your plants. Then you should also think about the greenhouse or glass house, plastic house, uh, which bands and etc. Or even setting house if you also want to propagate plant that uh, require uh, less light intensity, yeah. And net house, if the plant is uh, vulnerable with the uh, infestation of the uh, insect with its uh, virus, for instance. And even you can also just use a simple cover uh, in your area just to protect your plant from direct uh, uh, rainfall. This is another uh, example, so, so uh, you can see here, this is the Bulbo uh, greenhouse without uh, walls. Yeah, and uh, in contrary, there's also some type of tropical uh, greenhouse, yeah, fully closed. Uh, but uh, this one that we have is uh, equipped with uh, uh, atmosphere control, so like uh, uh, humidity, temperature, we can uh, control uh, in this uh, greenhouse but of course this is a uh, uh, very costly and uh, to be honest to to uh, to pay the the operational cost of this greenhouse cannot uh, be uh, fully by the uh, the plant in the inside of the greenhouse so this is only for for control uh, sorry this is only only for uh, attraction but it's be supported by the production of plant outside the greenhouse or even using others uh, more simple greenhouse. So just like this, this is uh, uh, just uh, uh, what we call the paranet house or set house. So this is uh, just a paranet, but uh, it closed the wall as well so not only the roof but also the, the wall we, we close it with the net we expect that the the insect yeah the big insect such as a grasshopper cannot go inside to eat the leaf of our uh, seedling so this is the uh, uh, cover yeah and then for plant they are need uh, less light intensity we can also put uh, some uh, paranet uh, in the uh, bottom of the, uh, I mean the the cell of the uh, greenhouse to reduce the light intensity. Yeah, if you have a uh, uh, money, you can also try to to do it in the uh, smart greenhouse. Yeah, so I I went to bless why uh, the Netherlands uh, last year and. Uh, I took a picture of this because at the time they have a, a competition for smart greenhouse and everything can be uh, controlled even they also uh, try to reduce the the, the waste yeah? they also reduce the uh, inefficient heat and also electricity of this uh, greenhouse so they call it a greenhouse to 2030 yeah, and as, although they say that even they produce uh, 
uh, beautiful ornamental plant uh, inside such as uh, anthurium uh, the cost of production if it's uh, below some level is not really uh, efficient but still it's useful for uh, attraction yeah for marketing but in the large scale like uh, I uh, saw to you before it's already economy and the other equipment needed uh, in the nursery is water pool and pump house you can uh, make it uh, like this with uh, the water reservoir like this with uh, permanent uh, stuff but uh, you can also make uh, from a uh, geomembrane like this and this is also very uh, easy to do less uh, uh, expensive and also uh, easy to be to be uh, removed and make it another uh, part of your nursery and the irrigation system uh, there are so many options of course and uh, you can also use gravity system but uh, using uh, water pump also distribution is also is, uh, nice and uh, this is the example in our nursery we already put uh, all the automatic uh, irrigation system in the uh, nursery site with high density of uh, seedling we use a spray system like this but uh, later with the uh, more important plants such as the mother stock or uh, plant they are ready to be distributed uh, uh, we, we put also uh, irrigation but with uh, single drips in each pot this is not from our uh, own picture but we, we exactly have the same uh, facility like this and planting media and preparation area uh, for a big nursery usually we also make a, a media processing house uh, for instance this is the rice husk we, we make a, what we call it in Indonesia arang sekam so we burn it and after that uh, uh, to be like this yeah? so why we, we, we burn it because we want to eliminate the uh, you know this is a rice hux and sometimes uh, it's a lot of uh, pathogen here so we try to sterilize them because we, what we want to uh, get from this uh, type of media is that it can uh, be an inert media for uh, hydroponic and it's not uh, containing any nutrition but it will improve the porosity of the media so this is uh, very important yeah. and we mix the media usually we use compost and green manure and also rice husks and after that we can fill it in the tray or in the single poly bag or even bigger uh, container for producing uh, plants and uh, it's also interesting because now there there are so many options for media mixer machine yeah and also media filler yeah you you can if you have a uh, money then you can buy a, a lot of things it's depend on your uh, scale yeah of your nursery so uh, I'll do, uh, uh, and also uh, this can help if you uh, face problem with uh, lack of uh, employee yeah, or, or worker the other industry facilities is uh, all this is uh, also part of the irrigation system but uh, uh, I forgot to mention that we, we can also uh, use a fogging system misting yeah, and hand watering and uh, uh, it should also be considered to have a drainage uh, system in your nursery because of course as plants not need too much water uh, even when the water is too much the plant can get uh, infected by uh, pathogen and there are also some options to use a bench with a drainage system in a big commercial nursery they already use this so it looks like a hydroponic system but the, 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 
different is that the the, the media uh, sometimes they contain a, a soil as well so they put the plant here and then they will uh, circulate the the water and sometimes they also use in the uh, put in the water the uh, nutrients so it should be uh, something like this and the other nursery facilities is the warehouse and then connectors between facility unit uh, you should have a nice uh, uh, a pathway for walking right so and the other is office uh, reception rest area holding staging area and etc you, you need of course uh, uh, you don't need to put it in all in the fancy way you can just start with uh, a uh, small house and then uh, you can divide it the, the room such as the reception area the office yeah the rest area and etc I see uh, some of uh, al alumni they develop a nursery and they, they start from scratch and then they they use the the, the small house or they build the wood house but the function of the house is uh, really uh really good because they they uh, divided the area of office reception rest area and etc and the nursery layout yeah usually they uh we, we should think about the distribution uh for for i mean for equipment and also for uh, media for the plants and also you should uh, think about the, the display area the propagation area yeah and uh, you can put your plan in the uh, maybe you can uh, make a cluster this is the the uh, the rootstock yeah the seedling they are there ready to be dis distributed and then uh, the, the working area etc this is the site plan of our nursery in Subang so we have uh, many blocks here yeah and each block we put the uh, identity yeah and we uh, usually we, we put uh, the plant in the same size and age and uh, this is the the entrance yeah and we put also display here so the uh, loading dock yeah, and display here so people they can just go and and uh, buy something in our display but if they want to also uh, uh, see the other part of our nursery is also possible and we have a greenhouse here for mother plants and also even we have a orchard to attract the uh, people to come yeah and a reservoir and other uh, uh, others uh, important part such as uh, this is the media house yeah and this is the uh, warehouse and uh, so on and uh, it would be also good if we can uh, make a good layout or setting for our uh, plants it's not only for ornamental plants in uh, actually we can also put our plant in a good order yeah such as uh, make a good layer the back will be uh, filled by the higher a plan eh? and uh, in front we put a smaller plan and if we can make a good layout then it will be also beneficial for your nursery okay so next is a planting material preparation the material uh, can be from seed yeah and we also can uh, get plant from cutting and grafting and budding so the seed source yeah uh we should think about the seed source uh where can we find the, the good seed for our uh, planting material and we can also harvest for our, our own uh, plant and we should also think about the seed storage and seed testing and pre-treatment for our seed uh, after storage and then planting and germination medium and also environment control and this is the uh, preparation if we have uh, seed as our uh, planting material we need to to check the species all the cultivar variety to be 
propagate it. Yeah, we, sh we should know about that because uh, uh, in a seedling stage, sometimes they look like just the same. And then we, uh, if possible, we also should use the certified seed. What is certified seed? We will talk about it uh, later in next uh, next meeting. And then we also should think about the seed storage and knowing what kind of uh, seed that we want to store, such as orthodox or recalcitrant seed. Yeah. Orthodox seeds can be stored for a long time in low water content and low temperature, and the relative humidity should be similar to room temperature. Yeah. Uh, and uh, recalcitrant seed. Recalcitrant seed is the generally seed of fruit plant. It cannot be stored for a long time. Yeah and it should be stored with high water content high air edge and low temperature and we also should uh, look carefully uh, the expiry date of the of the seed and we uh, before we we sow in a large scale it will be recommended to have a germination test uh, like uh, try to germinate 50 seed in a lot uh, i mean in the seed lot yeah and if the germination rate is below 60%, uh, then we should think another way. And then uh, we can also do the seed pre-treatment. Uh, sometimes it's necessary to induce and fasten seed germination and for uniform germination and also seeding growth. The example of seed pre-treatment, uh, I guess you get the detail of this in other course. Yeah, I just know. Uh, uh, try to remind you that the seed pretreatment can be a seed enhancement, yeah, uh, such as put it in a warm water or a higher temperature for uh, several periods, uh, and normally just for hot coat seeds. And then we can also do stratification, uh, scarification, and uh, uh, maybe the list of this uh, seed pretreatment uh, example. Uh, now is an increase and we should uh, prepare the planting uh, medium yeah it should be well drainage and low soluble salt uh, fine texture uh, pathogen free and optimum temperature for seed germination is 21 to 24 degrees celsius uh, so we should uh, uh, prepare the, the media and we can uh, use tray and then put the seed in this uh, tray, yeah. And we can also put it in the bands uh, uh, together, but uh, usually using tray like this is more uh, more convenient, yeah, because the root will be still attached with the media like this, and during the transplantation it will uh, uh, increase the percentage of the successfulness. Yeah, so this is just another example. And the light requirement for seedling yeah, is uh, most seeds need dark condition to germinate. Yeah, only some uh, kind of a plant they need light to germinate. But uh, be careful because after germination, light intensity need to be increased. Yeah, if not, then it can induce the etiolation. And some small size seed need uh, light to germinate. Uh, so if they are burnt in the uh, planting medium yeah, too deep, then they could, could not uh, germinate. And humidity of planting medium and environment, yeah, water need to be applied to planting medium to keep the moisture of the planting medium. And air humidity can be controlled by fogging, uh, misting, using high humidity and closer. And fogging and humidity and closer are better than misting in humidity control of small size uh, seedling yeah uh, because in small size seedling if the particle of uh, water is too too big yeah so, such as we use a uh, 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 misting yeah and we forget to uh, to set up the nozzle yeah and it the, the particle of water is too too big then the the seed yeah, will be uh, broken or out uh, from the media. 
fertilizer uh, some planting mediums are inert yeah uh, not containing any uh, nutrients such as uh, a rice husk yeah that we already uh, talked before uh, in this case so the fertilizer application is needed and uh, for the first nitrogen fertilizer in liquid form can be applied and uh, the concentration uh, is, or doses is uh, depend on what kind of plant we want to propagate actually and pest and disease control in the nursery for uh, seedling from seed the main disease is pitium yeah and risoctonia phytophthora pitium is the number one uh, so for uh, prevention first we use should, uh, the sterile medium and maybe we should apply the fungicide and bactericide on the medium and good sanitation of nursery I have experience of this uh, in my potato uh, nursery we experience with high infestation of pitium and what we found is that the pitium comes from the water so again the quality of the water is, is really important it will be good if you have a reservoir and then also what uh, water treatment facility for your uh, nursery if possible yeah and then pest control for uh, seed is uh, using uh, furadan next is the planting material preparation for cutting uh, first the mother plant is very important we should uh, uh, know about the, the mother plant uh, identity such as uh, uh, what is the what is it uh, true to type and then what is the name and then what is the kind of the plant yeah and it should be uh, healthy uh, therefore the mother plant we, we for cutting especially we put it in the uh, special uh, facility such as a greenhouse with a uh, close uh, screen yeah and we put a lot of pesticide uh, or uh, fungicide in the mother plant because the price of mother plant is also uh, expensive yeah and sometimes the disease indexing is needed to guarantee the healthy mother plant but not all of the plant of course for chrysanthemum for instance the disease indexing is uh, uh, needed yeah also for potato and etc yeah, so this is the mother plant we, we, we can do a uh, cutting yeah and then after that we test uh, for the fungi and bacterial and if it's uh, proven to be diseased disease yeah so it can be discarded just throw away and the healthy cutting uh, from the first test will be continued with the virus indexing and after the virus indexing we got the result if this is a, a, a virus free yeah we we continue with the propagation but if this is not a, a virus free yeah cutting with virus we can do virus elimination and uh, after that we 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 got the virus free cutting and we use it as a mother plant and we continue the propagation again yeah so this uh, illustrate the stock of mother plants this is for chrysanthemum we, we have a, a mother plant like this and we, we keep it in a, a very control uh, condition and we we, we put uh, fertilizer in a very optimal yeah and then uh, we we prune it uh, uh, in certain periods and then also we apply uh, uh, pathogen control in this uh, system so it should be free from pests and disease and periodically we harvest to to use it in uh, other uh, propagation yeah so something like this and even for uh, points that yeah they also uh, use uh, mother plant yeah and they treat the plant like this and uh, the cutting uh, rooting medium should be prepared it's depend on the plant species yeah uh, but in common it should be uh, good in uh, water holding capacity 
uh, the example can be rukul, yeah, cocoa peat, rice husks, or coal, yeah. And the temperature of rooting medium is 22 to 24 degrees Celsius. And for uh, rooting, uh, you can also use uh, individual tray, but also you can use some um, uh, something like this, yeah. We use it for chrysanthemum uh, seedling, yeah. So we put the uh, cutting in this uh, media, and sometimes we also apply a uh, rooting hormone for cutting. Yeah, it can be a powder paste or a liquid. Yeah, in uh, the in successful case, yeah, it will induce uh, or increase the root number and root uniformity. And for cutting, uh, also the light is very important. The optimum light intensity is uh, around this. But uh, to low light intensity, of course, it will induce the etiolation. And on particular plant species, long day, you need to uh, add a more uh, light periods yeah, using night time to keep the seedling in vegetative phase, uh, such as uh, for chrysanthemum. If you do not uh, uh, put additional light, then uh, the plant is the plant is still small and it already produces a flower. And this is for the irrigation. Uh, we can also use a hand watering, a misting, and fogging. The mist irrigation uh, now is also uh, 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 relatively cheap. Yeah, you, it's uh, some uh, uh, small scale farmers they can uh, also approach uh, this uh, system. And next is the fertilizer. Uh, of course, it will be needed, yeah. And if we do misting, sometimes uh, we can apply this uh, together. And it's uh, actually this depend, yeah. But uh, sometimes you can also use uh, this uh, concentration and doses. And uh, during the rooting uh, period, we should also think about the air circulation, and. Uh, because sometimes it's uh, very uh, closely uh, together, yeah. So it prevents seedling from uh, shedding of each other, yeah, and then prevent root attach uh, to each other. And in the end, you will get the problem with that if you do not uh, really take care about the planting space. So after the root are formed, then we can harvest the plant. Yeah, so like this and also this, and even you can put it in the individual uh, pot like what I said before, and the it will affect with the transplanting uh, activity. Yeah, so transplanting mean that we put it into bigger container and uh, using medium uh, such as soil, rice husks, charcoal, and manure. Yeah, and depend on the plant species and depend on the container and we should avoid dehydration and root breaking during transplanting therefore individual tricell is better than bands yeah, to prevent uh, root damage during uh, transplanting and uh, last is the packaging and transportation of root cutting uh, the root cutting uh, usually packed in transparent plastic bag with, with holes because it can uh, uh, keep the, the plants uh, dry. Yeah, it's not. I mean, uh, the plant in a good uh, uh, humidity because if the plastic are closed, then the humidity will be very high, will be wet. Yeah, and it can uh, stimulate the fungi uh, or another pathogen in the uh, cutting then it package uh, it will be packaged in a box yeah? and it can be stored in a uh, cool room temperature such as 10 to 15 minutes yeah? eh, sorry 15 uh, degrees Celsius and the humidity about 90 percent and transported using cards with cooler uh, using this also this temperature and the uh, humidity yeah so we, we harvest the chrysanthemum seedling and then pack it, uh, pack it in the uh, plastic with hole like this. 
and uh, sometimes they they can uh, I mean the, the farmers they request for uh, unrooted uh, cutting yeah they uh, so the the producer will will harvest the cutting and make a package like this yeah with the uh, uh, newspaper uh, paper and we also can apply the quality control this is the example of the selection and grading of the cutting uh, so cutting with root like this with the grade A uh, last time I buy it in last year is about uh, 200 uh, rupiah yeah, each and the grade B is about uh, 150 rupiah so it's already a uh, good business, you know. And after that, the size uniformity, they will do the uh, slicing like this. Yeah. And inspection of the presence of pests and disease. And next, we go to the planting material preparation for grafting and budding. And the important aspect uh, using grafting and budding, of course, we should check about the rot rootstock availability yeah so generally seed of root tree are recalcitrant the seed availability for rootstock is seasonal uh, you know what I mean so uh, for fruit tree usually we cannot store the seed for a long time yeah so uh, basically the availability of the seed for rootstock is uh, in a certain period where the fruits are harvest yeah and the Rootstock, good rootstock, is that uh, the compatible one with the scion that we want to, to to use, yeah, and also the adaptation of the uh, location for propagation. So we should also think about that. And then the scion availability, we we should uh, look for the scion. You, you you can buy the the science, yeah. You don't need to produce by yourself. But you can also buy the duplicate of mother plants from the mother plants, but of course the price uh, is uh, expensive. Yeah, but the good thing is that you can just uh, take the sign nearby your place. If not, then you should order into uh, breeder or or people from uh, maybe uh, far from your place. You should think about that first, and then you should match with the availability of the rootstock. Yeah, and the successfulness of the uh, grafting and budding is uh, depend on the physiological condition of scion and rootstock, incompatibility and technical steel. So, the rootstock availability and the scion availability should be very matched. Yeah, if the rootstock already uh, ready, but you cannot find scion, then the rootstock will be bigger and weaker and it's not uh, good for uh, grafting or budding and vice versa if the uh, the uh, science already there you can you luckily you get from uh, from the order of the mother plant but the rootstock is not ready yet then you can also be in problem yeah so this is uh, just an example. I think you already familiar with the uh, rootstock and science because you do it in the practical as well. <laughs> and this is an example. You, you need to prepare the rootstock. Yeah? And after that, you graft it uh, with the durian and you get the plant. And uh, with the maintenance of the uh, plan from grafting and budding you should uh, do the pinching of the new shoot from the rootstock yeah? and you do the, the pruning and irrigation is also should be done fertilizer uh, or you can use a fertigation and also repotting if the plant uh, become bigger yeah so in industry uh, nursery industry sometimes uh, when the plant is bigger you can uh, get benefit from that yeah so uh, in other uh, uh, business when they cannot sell something then they should throw it away but in the nursery uh, when the plant is too big yeah because nobody wants to buy it 
or uh, you, you fail in the marketing for certain period and the plan become bigger you can even get the uh, better price because you can uh, put it in the bigger container yeah, and you can uh, sell it uh, with a higher price and maintenance uh, for crafting and budding also we should do the weeding because weeds negatively affect the seedling growth because uh, of the nutrition competition competition of water light and co2 and also host of particular pests and some weeds produce allelopathic substance that can harm your plants and pests and disease of course we should think about that because uh, in your nursery maybe you can find fungi bacterial virus even and pests so uh, if the uh, presence of infestation of this pathogen is still low you can do uh, the uh, control manually by removing the uh, infected plants but uh, of course you can do control before doing the sterilization pasteurization of planting medium regular weeding yeah and using a repellent uh, bait strap predator or pest and regular application of pesticide uh, even it's organic uh, it will be good or uh, chemical is also not uh, not bad and for human resource uh, in your nursery that some technical skill are uh, required and uh, in Indonesia we also already start with the certification system of the human uh, or worker uh, working in the nursery such as the technical skill for seedling and cutting grafting abiding pruning irrigation uh, pesticide application reporting sanitation etc thank you very much so this is the introductory talk of our uh, topic today I uh, expect uh, some uh, feedback and question from you. Thank you very much for your attention.